Dragon and I had heard so much about this event before from the girls playing it and so I was super excited to be able to come this year and I feel like I exceeded all my expectations. Um, the courses were great, the people were amazing, all the volunteers, the organization, honestly just just a really, really good tournament all around. And yeah. you David? Yeah, just to reiterate, I mean it was, it was fantastic, you know, I mean I've never played a golf tournament like this before that, you know, we play in alternate groups and um, you know, it was good to catch up with, with a lot of girls that we grew up playing golf with as well. And um, You know, it was special with the crowd this week, especially on the weekend. You know, there's a lot of folk about and everyone's on the fairways and, you know, it feels like, I don't know, it was almost, you know, when you were playing a top amateur tournament and the crowd followed in behind you and it was a great event and uh, one that I'll definitely be back to. Questions, please. Uh, uh, Celine, first win on the LPGA Tour, how does that feel? Oh, it's amazing. It's uh, been something I've been working towards um, since I turned pro and I just feel like uh, it, just, uh, it just happened. I don't think I realise right now, but um, no, I'm super excited with, uh, um, with the, way <clears throat> the way I handle myself. It's not always easy to be able to get your first win and uh, just over the moon. There was a moment on uh, 15 where Sue had a chip in, almost uh, rolled into the hole for Eagle, uh, and then you made the, the birdie putt, and you seemed from that moment on to almost have things in your control. Yeah, definitely. I feel like I've struggled a little bit all day with my long game, and I just didn't have that many birdie opportunities. And then um, on 15, when I made that putt, it kind of really um, made me um, like motivate myself and uh, made me really uh, more confident in my abilities to uh, win the tournament. And playing with Kim, uh, who started two strokes ahead uh, at the start of the day, when you see uh, your playing partner sort of start to move down the leaderboard, do you, I mean, do you get the feeling then that there's a chance for you to, to strike as well? Yeah, I think it was something that I struggled with a little bit on the front line is that I was um, too much focused on what, what the other players in my group were doing and and so I just feel like you know they weren't playing that well and so I feel like I sort of kept my uh, my guard down a little bit and I tried to focus more on my own game and didn't really look at the leaderboard that much um, especially in the back nine and I think that helped me out quite a bit. We were madly doing our research on you before while you were playing so well and people were saying you're a great front runner is that true? Um, I, I'm not sure about that, but um, I mean, I'm pretty happy that they think that, but I don't know. I mean, I feel like, you know, every opportunity I get um, to play for the win, I take it and I uh, feel like I learn every time, you know, um, whether it's a win or a loss, I just try to learn from it and, and grow from there. A biggest, an Australian connection with Cameron McCormick in the past, I believe? Yeah. Well, he's still my coach, so not just the past. Still your coach? <laughs> yeah. What's, what has Cameron's um, impact on you been? What, what's, what has his impact on you been? Um, it's, it's been great to work with him because he's an um, all-around coach, and I feel like uh, he's helped me uh, with my confidence and with the way I uh, approach the game um, very much because I was struggling, struggling a little bit mentally for the past uh, two, three years. And I've been, um, and he, so he's just been helping me uh, trust myself more and uh, being more confident on the course. Did he give you any Australian specific advice? Australian specific advice? I, I don't know. I, I don't think so, but um, uh, yeah, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> D David, have you hit a more important shot than the uh, shot into 18? No, never, never. I mean, we, we were with three holes to play. We said we were going to try and finish three, two, four, you know, and in the hope that really we would, we could get a top three finish, um, and then birdie sixteen, par seventeen, and going down the last, um, you know, we said we need eagle, you know, we make eagle, we post at eighteen under. You never know what can happen. Um, that was kind of in between clubs, in between a hybrid and a four iron, and. Uh, in a normal week, you'd probably just hit the four, take two putts from the front of the green, but we needed to make needed to make three, so you know, I took a bit off it, and um, that came out perfect. It 
it was drifting a little bit on the wind, but it was no, it came out perfect. I'm not sure if you were aware of what was happening in the groups behind you, but was there a sense of shock that, I mean, in the end, you didn't even have to worry about a, a playoff? Playoff, yeah. Well, it, at the time, with you know, I'd been behind all day with uh, Brad and Justin, you know, in my group. Um, so I was trying to get in front of Brad. You know, he was he finished 17 under. He played great golf. We had a good game yesterday, um, and again today, it was he was a nice guy to play with. And, um, you know, so at the time I was trying to get in front of in front of Brad, and you know that was the goal. And um, you know, if I put a bit of pressure on Wade, then then happy days, you know. And um, no, nah, I'm just delighted. Were you watching on the TV what happened to Wade? No, no, we went to the range and hit a few shots and prepared for a playoff. So, so how did you find out that you double bogey? Uh, just after I'd done an interview, um, somebody says he's weighted doubled 17. Um, and then, yeah, we just went to the range and, you know, kind of got away from the, the fuss. So early into your career on the European tour, I mean, how does it sort of feel to, to have that win under your belt already? I mean, it's... It's massive, you know, it's not something I expected. Um, you know, for me, just being out here playing uh, on the European Tour was enough. You know, I've been loving the four events I've played so far and, um, you know, to just be a, a European Tour player, you know, was, uh, was what I was happy with, you know, but, you know, to have won today and it sort of changes things a little bit. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll go home and reflect a little bit on, on things and uh, yeah, reassess from that. How does a Scotsman celebrate winning a European Tour event? Oh, I'll probably have maybe 12, 15 pints tonight. <laughs> I don't know. No, we'll see. I'm not flying to Perth until half past one tomorrow, so I'll certainly have a few. <coughs> so, uh, what does this do uh, for you in terms of status on the LPGA Tour moving forward? Um, well... It hasn't. It's not going to change much. Um, I just feel like I was a first or second alternate in Singapore in three weeks, so now I'm in, and I think that's the main change that I have for this season. Yeah. Any more questions? Any more questions, ladies and gentlemen? You ask how a French woman celebrates. Oh. Yes, how do you celebrate? With lots of champagne, I guess. Uh, a French. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Most importantly, thank you both for a fantastic week of golf. We've all just loved it, and we hope you come back next year. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thanks, thank everyone. You. Cheers.